Hello, in this video we're going to look at the hedonic wage function and a worker who's trying to maximize utility by choosing the optimal wage risk offer. The hedonic wage function. This gives the various wage risk combinations in the labor market. It slopes upwards. Workers prefer less risk, so workers need higher wages to compensate for more risky jobs. It is costly for firms to reduce risk. Firms will reduce risk if wages fall enough to offset the cost of increased safety. Workers will accept lower wages if the value to increase safety outweighs the losses to lower wages. Some workers have a strong distaste for risk and thus choose low wage and low risk jobs. Other workers don't mind risk and thus choose high wage and high risk jobs. So imagine a worker's utility function is given by the following equation, where W is the wage and R is risk of injury on the job. So again, W is the wage, R is going to be the risk of injury, in this case risk of job fatality. You'll notice an increase in W in the utility function increases utility, but an increase in R lowers utility. So we can think of R as a bad. Let's say that the market's hedonic wage function is given by the following. So in the labor market, workers are going to get paid more the higher the risk. So as R increases, the equilibrium wage goes higher. Let's now solve for the worker's utility maximizing wage risk choice. Here's our utility function. Here's our hedonic wage function. We're going to use a substitution method. We're going to plug the hedonic wage function into the utility function. So where we see W in the utility function, we're going to replace that with 5 plus 1 half R. I do that right here. Simplifying the right-hand side a little bit and simplifying it some more. We're going to maximize utility by taking the derivative of this utility function with respect to risk and we get back 45 minus r. We're going to set that derivative equal to 0. We're maximizing and we're going to solve for r. r equals 45. We're going to plug this 45 into the hedonic wage function and we get the worker's wage at $27.50. So the worker will choose to take a risk uh, that is equivalent to 45 here and will earn $27.50 and that will maximize the worker's utility. Let's get the worker's total utility at a wage of $27.50 and a risk of 45. Here's our utility function and plugging in 27.5 for W and 45 for R, we have the worker's level of utility. Let's suppose a government regulation mandates a maximum risk of 30, so R equals 30. Does this safety regulation make the worker better off? So here's our utility function. Here's our hedonic wage function. If the most risk that this worker can take is 30, this worker will now be only earning $20 an hour. And if we evaluate the worker's utility function when W equals 20 and R equals 30, we get a total utility of 1400 So you'll notice here that this mandate that does make the workplace safer will make some workers worse off, those workers that prefer to take on more risk to earn those higher wages. So in this case, this worker is made worse off. This worker, as we're going to see, would be moved to a lower indifference curve. So let's graph the hedonic wage function. Here's a graph of it on the right. Here's the equation that describes the hedonic wage function. So a vertical intercept of 5 and a slope of 1 half. And I located here the worker's utility maximizing choice right here at $27.50 and R equals 45. And then if the worker uh, is limited to a maximum risk level of 30 by a government regulation or mandate, that would move the worker down here on the hedonic wage function. 
to, again, the government regulation moves a worker to a lower point on the hedonic wage function. And for this worker, that correspond to a lower indifference curve, meaning lower utility. Let's now graph the indifference curves. So here's what the indifference curve is going to look like uh, when there is no government mandate. The indifference curve will just be tangent to the hedonic wage function. This worker is getting on their highest indifference curve possible. So to graph the indifference curve at the utility maximizing choice, we're going to set u equal to the level of utility when the worker is earning $27.50 and taking on a risk of 45. So setting u equal to 1512.5, we're going to now solve for w. I have a table here, and I'm going to put in various levels of risk into this equation above, and we'll get the corresponding wage. And so if we're to plug in R equals 10 and W equals 16.81 into the utility function, you would get a level of utility of 1512.5. And here's just a bunch of other combinations of risk wages that give the same level of utility that would all fall on the same indifference curve. So here's where 10 and 16.81 is. Here's where 20 and 18.91 is, roughly speaking. Here's where 45 and 27.50 is. And uh, when R is 60, wage is 37.81, so roughly here. And finally, if there's a government regulation that mandates a maximum risk of 30, Okay, this point right here would fall on a lower indifference curve for this consumer or this worker, meaning they would get less utility. Okay, I'll stop here.